Hi, I'm Don Burton, and I'm the Managing Director for uh, Techstars EdTech, um, the EdTech sector. And it's, I think it's really interesting that we're, the EdTech sector is up after the FinTech sector, because it's really interesting that the amount of money spent on technology by those two sectors are the polar opposites. So FinTech spends about the most uh, of its sector's revenues in technology, about 20% um, by some estimates. Education on the other end of the spectrum spends less than 1% of the total money spent on education goes into technology at this point in time. And the average DT GDP is about 10% goes into technology. So the ed tech sector um, is really at the, it's just the very beginning of having technology disrupt it. And so it's, it's a pretty exciting sector because if you look at technology's penetration into the classroom, you know, all of us have gone through school or some form of education. Well, what you went through is pretty much the same thing that sits out there today. But there are glimpses of the types of changes that are coming down the pike. And um, we have five companies that are gonna give us uh, some glimpses into the type of disruption. And the, and the other thing about EdTech is more capital investment has gone into EdTech companies this year than ever in the past. And I believe it is the largest, um, the sector that has the largest amount of capital getting poured into it right now because people do believe that we're at that tipping point and education just can't stay the same forever. So with that, I'm gonna call up uh, five companies that'll give us, again, different glimpses into the types of things that are going on in educational technology. And we have everywhere from corporate training and lifelong learning down to K-12 schooling. So we have everything in between and we're gonna start with corporate training and Cognotion, Joanna Schneier. Thank you. All right, hi, my name's Joanna Schneier and I'm the CEO of Cognotion. Cognotion transforms entry-level millennials from distracted job hoppers to career-driven employees. And in our first year in operation, we've been able to gain some serious traction uh, in, the first, uh, in the last six months, we've generated over $8 million in revenue and have 600,000 employees in our courses. So why millennials? Millennials right now are 80 million uh, people in the U.S. alone. That's as large as the baby boomers. And uh, many of them, about 60%, work in entry-level positions. Even 60% of them I uh, do not even graduate from college. So what's the problem that we're trying to solve? Entry-level employees have massive turnover rates. Uh, in the uh, restaurant industry, it's about 200%. In the hotel industry, it's around 60%. And these corporations have no idea how to access the power of their young employees. Not only that, 91% of millennials change jobs and expect to change their jobs rapidly. They don't know why they should be staying at their jobs, they are not inspired to stay at their jobs, and they are expecting, for the first time ever, to access information on a mobile uh, basis, and only 6% of companies feel like that they are using technology properly to train their employees. Young adults uh, get into jobs that they don't want. About 30% of them are living at home, and 50% of them uh, are taking on jobs that they don't really want to be in and have no loyalty to staying in. And so what are corporations doing to train these young adults? They're giving them paper. They're giving them binders, old PowerPoints. None of it is mobile, none of it is accessible for a young generation to do on the fly, and they're not interested in what they're providing for them. So corporate training right now is not working for young adults like this. They are young, uh, interested in accessing mobile, um, and they want to access information wherever they are, at any moment. 
So what's our solution? Cognotion provides mobile training applications that uh, are available for an entry-level employee wherever they are. They're gamified, they use uh, emotion and context to reach an audience. And then for our uh, employers, we have a platform that is really easy to use that enables them to track their employees. We uh, have been able to uh, gain our traction by reaching out to franchise holding companies that have access to hundreds of thousands of employees in one uh, uh, foul swoop. And uh, through this, we've been able to uh, reach uh, 600,000 employees in this last year. We're working in a huge market. Corporate training is $307, $307 billion, and uh, it's a market that has not been disrupted. Our solutions for our end user are games that uh, train them in soft skills and hard skills, skills like showing up to work on time, being a professional, uh, just doing the very basic things that they need to do to be able to succeed in their careers. Um, our products are highly configurable for the end user. Uh, a co corporation can put in their own information like their own menu or uh, information about their company, but they're not customized for the end user. And our platform for the managers allows them to track at any time, not just at a yearly annual review or when somebody gets fired, how an employee is doing. It gives them the ability to provide inputs for that employee so that they can uh, improve retention rates. We're targeting sectors like these. Uh, each of these are needing mobile applications uh, that can reach their employees on the fly. And we've got a really strong team. Uh, our team has been working in gaming and mobile for the past uh, 10 years. Uh, so we really understand this market. Uh, we, my first um, mobile application that I built was over 10 years ago for the Indian uh, market. Uh, we were doing training at that time, uh, sending SMSs. And we've only been working on that since then to uh, improve our uh, products. And uh, Cognotion, We believe that young adults have a lot of power and that there is a lot uh, of ability in this young population. They want mobile applications to be able to succeed in their jobs. And Cognotion is reaching this young uh, population through training programs that are intuitive, easy to use, uh, and are game-based. And I look forward to uh, speaking with you all more about uh, our company. Thank you, Joanna. So the next company is Verificient Technologies. And Verificient plays in the kind of higher ed and graduate schools, um, so undergraduates and graduate schools. And they have a proctorless proctoring technology. So here is Tim Duda to present them. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It is a little bright out here. Can you guys hear me? Mike? <laughs> Sorry. Over the last 10 years, the growth of online education has exploded at a rate of 418%. With the democratization of education, People are taking online courses all over the world. But in order for those credentials to have integrity, we must address the big questions that people are just starting to think about. How do we verify who took the course? Who deserves the credit? How do we know who cheated? Today, 86% of students admit to cheating and getting away with it. 86%. And the cheaters are getting very creative. They're placing crib notes on their thumbs. They're hiding cheat sheets in their bras. And they're even being caught blue-handed. And some cheaters are placing their phones in a juice box. A grown man in a juice box 
really. And combating cheating is getting even more creative. There's your do-yourself hat trick. There's even put your head in a box. As curriculums change from the classroom to computers, I should really watch this. As curriculums change from the classroom to computers and now to mobile devices, so will the need for online assessments. Could you imagine taking a chemistry final anytime, anywhere on an iPad? Well, you could also imagine the cheating that comes with this. For online degrees and credentials to be valued, we need to address this. My name is Tim Duda. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Verification Technologies, and we're on a mission to put an end to online cheating for mobile testing platforms. At Verification, we specialize in identity verification through the use of computer visioning, machine learning, and biometrics, all based on cloud technologies. Our software, Proctor Screen, is the only automated proctoring solution that continuously verifies the identity of online test takers. It's available on iPads and Androids. What makes us different? We're the only solution that's automated, that's scalable, on demand, and completely proctorless. Yeah, that's right. No human supervision required. We're integrated into all the major learning management systems. And in fact, I'm proud to say that we're the only automated practicing solution that's a premier partner for the Canvas learning management system. Our customers are all throughout the country. In fact, let me tell you about one of them. Flat World Knowledge is one of the most innovative mobile device learning management system. They provide a college education at 65% lower than any online degree. In fact, they chose Proctor Screen as their solution. I got good news. We have a 10-year deal with them going forward. Let me share another case with you, St. George University. It's the largest medical school in the Caribbean. Over a five-week program, we decrease their integrity instances by 91%. In fact, by week two, we caught two students cheating tremendously that were expelled on the spot. Let me show you how it works. Introducing a new way for students to take Kaplan nursing tests anytime, anywhere, with Proctor Screen for the iPad. When a student selects their test from the dashboard, they'll be asked to browse ideal test practices and complete an automated system check. Then we verify their identity with a facial scan, an ID scan, a knuckle scan, and a room scan. Instructions and examples are just a touch away. After reviewing the exam terms, they'll be launched right into the test. The red frame around the screen indicates that the student and their iPad are being monitored. As an instructor, reviewing student proctoring reports is easy. Log into ProctorTrack, select the student you wish to view based on their integrity, and check out their video report. Suspected test violations appear on the right, organized by type and timestamp. Clicking Watch Video takes you right to the moment where the violation happens. Here you can see that this student received help from a friend, left the test session, and looked online for answers. Below, the hardware report and other suspicious user activity indicate whether the student attempted to use multiple monitors, run a blacklisted app, or copy test questions. When you're confident that a student has cheated, click Mark has failed and confirm, and you're finished. Proctor Screen, automated remote proctoring, simplified. As online degrees and assessments continue to grow for mobile devices, so will the need for our solution. I'm Tim, that's why we're very efficient and we're the missing piece needed to ensure the integrity for the online credential. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. 
The next uh, company that's about to present is SmartOn, and SmartOn is in the work ready to space. Um, so after you graduate and you went through Proctor Screen and got a, <laughs> a credential degree, um, then you have the task of trying to find a job in this, in this economy. And so basically there's a huge skills gap, and Rockshit from SmartOn is gonna tell us about that and his solution. Good afternoon. There are 4.8 million jobs in the US as of today, but 9.3 million people are looking for those jobs. The reason for this mismatch is the skills gap. Out of these 4.8 million jobs, a million jobs require use of skills, which, which requires use of technology tools. These technology tools are available on the web as well as on, on the mobile apps the problem is employed people and un underemployed people are struggling to cope up with these apps. Meet Kim, she's 26. She works for a marketing company as an associate. She's a, she's a graduate of a state university. She's asked to work on the online project that the company is going through. The company is going digital and she's not ready for it. She needs to learn the skills in e-commerce and digital marketing. She needs to learn these tools so that, so that she can become ready for the job that is given to, us, to, to her. The problem is she needs to not know just one skill or one tool. She needs to know multiple of them, tools such as Shopify for e-commerce platform, Moz for SEO, Hootsuite for social media marketing. Each job function today requires not just one tool, but mastery of several tools. We call it the full stack. Here's the problem though. Kim is not ready to spend $12,000 or three months of her life going to an offline boot camp. Even if she did, the problem is that courses are all top down or theoretical and all she will get is just a bunch of books and some knowledge that she will not be able to apply. On the other hand, enrolling in an online light touch video class where she pays $50 a month will also not cut it for her. Because what they do is just give her, give her half hour video lectures by some random Joe the instructor. That is not comprehensive and definitely will not make her job ready. Introducing SmartOn. We are the company which basically teach these technology tools in an online format where students learn projects along with a full stack approach. I'm Rakshit Kejriwal, co-founder of SmartOn, and 3,000 students have taken it worldwide. Let's see how it works. Our courses are in uh, a stage in three, uh, three, sub three co components. See it, try it, and do it. Here, Kim is actually learning how to build a web store using Shopify. In the see it phase, she's actually shown step-by-step -step instructions of the platform how the expert would use it. In the try phase, she actually gets to practice it on, a, on an interactive platform with the use of instructions. In the do it phase, we actually make the web tool available to her so that she can create a web store for her company using this platform, which is Shopify. She's adding the products over there, and once she does that, the mentors who are experts certified by Shopify actually help her give critique and advice. She actually gets told that she could have done probably product description better from what she's done. Our learning content is HTML5, delivered in a responsive design, and hence Kim can take these courses online, uh, on mobile actually. When Kim completes this rigorous course and masters these tools, she gets certified. Now she's not only ready for a job, she also gets a salary hike too. We have learners coming from 60 countries, and very interestingly, most of our learners from the emerging markets are using mobile devices to access our courses. In fact, 80% of internet connectivity in countries like India is through mobile devices. So the, what we feel that the, the, the trends that we will see from the emerging markets on mobile will be much in, uh, encouraging as we scope. Social and collaborative learning along with mentorship forms the backbone of our course taking experience. Mobile makes it very, uh, possible for us to enhance this further. 
We are able to push bite-sized learning compo uh, components to our learners through mobile, whether it is a little test, whether it is a little assessment, whether it is a little reminder that they need from time to time. And we are seeing very good results from there. We've done $100,000 in revenue, which is modest by this thing, but these were all pilots. But we are just getting started from here. Our product partners basically promote our courses to their new users. Our education partners, such as Laureate, promote our courses to their new students. Our business model is where the learners pay for the courses and our partners do a rev share with us. This is how we get scale as well. We are expanding into new areas such as full stack online marketing, full stack CRM, and full stack project management. All these areas have tremendous numbers of jobs and an acute deficit of the skills on the other side. These are, these are areas which are global in nature and we are working on them actively in the next three months, it will be all live. Our team has 20 years of education experience with skills in learning, technology, product development, and business development. We are a proud company of Kaplan Textiles Accelerator of 2014, and we are actively raising uh, our seed round. Please come talk to us to know more about SmartOn and how we are solving the problem of digital skills gap. Thank you. Okay, so the next uh, company is Smile from Stanford, and Thomas Newbart will be presenting. Thomas, come on up. Oh yeah, it is bright up here. So which button do I hit, just the green button? So as you are reading that, I guess, um, I'd like to share a few notes that I made before I came up here. Um, so first of all, the e-learning the e market in 2000, the e-learning market in 2015 is predicted to be around $107 billion revenue. The smart learning market, which is all high-tech stuff and mobile and such, um, increases to around $344 billion in 2019. At the same time, 50% students fail federal standards on a regular basis. College students don't engage, and because of that, they just drop out. If you look what has been done over the last generations, um, we created standards to measure certain performances, and I don't think they have worked too well. I can speak from experience. My wife has been a teacher for 15 years and a school principal and the headaches they are going through is pretty amazing. The next phase was we are digitizing books following high-tech trends. Didn't work out either too well. The next one is we're offering e-learning classes. And I'm not disagreeing with any of what we just heard. I think we actually agree on all of this. But the dropout rate in general is actually pretty high. And the latest phase, so to speak, over the last year, two years, are the MOOCs the massive open online courses that most of us may be familiar with. But even there, the business models are currently not there just yet, and the dropout rate is actually fairly high. So there has been no fundamental changes the way we actually teach or the way we actually learn by using new technologies. So here we have mobile devices, and we are applying mobile to the way of teaching the way we have done it for all these years. And we believe that that needs to change fundamentally. So SMILE is a, an, a very early stage uh, startup, a project out of Stanford. Uh, we are actually in fundraising mode. Uh, so if you want to talk to us about uh, any of these opportunities, just let us know afterwards. So just uh, a quick overview of, um, of uh, what this is all about. So we believe that the whole education needs to transform towards critical thinking so that the people and the children today who go to school are ready to actually apply how they learned and what they learned to the workforce. 
And if we don't change fundamentally by using new technologies, the way we teach in school, we believe we are not ready to be competitive in the workforce matching the 21st century requirements. Um, and I'm speaking for the United States for the moment. We had test pilots uh, installed 25, in 25 cities, 25 uh, in various countries, um, to measure some of the results of how this can increase the way we teach. So overall, uh, the new way of critical thinking is we need to get students more engaged. They need to create, they need to present, they need to solve, they need to analyze, and they need to reflect. So instead of me sitting there as a student being totally bored where a teacher tells me or teaches me how to speak English with a book in their hand and you know this is the word tree and this is the word book and such and such, why not flipping this around and giving kids a mobile device? Send them out, they can take pictures, they come back, you collect the pictures, you rate them by you know, how many kids have done the same pictures and make it relevant to the kids and then challenge the kids to ask questions. And when they ask the question, you teach them the language in that way. So it's not about here is a tree, it's like, what is a tree? Why is there a tree? Why is the tree brown? Why is it green? And such and such and such. And you can apply this anywhere, not just lower education, it's actually corporate education and anything that you can think of if you apply the content in the right way by using this particular uh, technology. So that's the engagement factor. The next one is transparency. If you have a software and a cloud and the combination of both and you can track the questions, the, the answers, the, the richness and the depth of the questions in itself, you can get a lot of data from the performance of the teacher, the school in itself, the individual student. Did my child ask intelligent question? Did they answer certain questions from other students? How can a student rate the other students? So it's like peer evaluation. It's a completely different dynamic of how a classroom should look like in the future, rather than me sitting here lecturing to all of you and you may be bored out of your mind. Luckily, I have lights in my face, so I cannot confirm if that's right or wrong. But that's, that's the, the engagement level that needs to change within the classroom. And again, it's, it's all about critical thinking and using new tools to be ready for the 21st century and for the work wars following after. By collecting all of this, there will be um, a, a cloud connection, um, big data, big data analytics, and then you can um, provide results in real time on a portal to a teacher. The teacher can adapt their assessment of individual students they can maybe change the lecture, they can change the content according to the individual student that is part of the class that may not have been recognized to have a certain weakness before the end of the year when the rates are coming out. And for the parents, it's the same thing. They go on a portal and they can, they can see what kind of questions, how engaged my kid has been today in real time on a daily basis in every single class. So with that, um, SMILE um, is built up on three components. The, the first one is, this is just a test device. Um, ultimately, this can be as small as a little stick that you stick into a computer, and it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connectivity, it has storage space. We can add certain third-party content on an as-needed basis. It has the mobile application, which i show you in a second, and it has the overall conceptual uh, software that has been developed um, at Stanford and it comes out of Stanford. So with that, um, I go a little bit quickly because I have way too many slides. Um, there is a particular process of how certain questions will be asked. Uh, by the way, that software is, uh, is, is available today online. Any of you can actually log in to play with it a little bit. How it looks, you can create your own course or a little test content if you wish. Um, the next slide kind of sums it up in a nutshell. The top portion is what I just said about the three components. It's about the student engagement, the transparency to the child, the teacher, the parents, 
the school district, the principal, the state, the government, and based on information that will be stored in the cloud and monetized and analyzed, certain fundamental decisions actually can be made on, an, on a real-time basis. Um, I, clicked, I clicked a little bit too fast. Where this is applicable is not just as a standalone, but it's also, it can be adapted to an, uh, a learning management system today. It can be adapted to a MOOCs to enhance the MOOC with these kind of critical thinking, and it can be attached to anything else that we may not even know today, whatever that may be. The stakeholders, I talked a little bit about it. I'm running out of time, but let me just quickly give you a snapshot of the interfaces as it exists today. So we have a web interface. We have the mobile interface, obviously comes in certain levels based on the activities and who is using it and how they are using it. Um, it shows you the layout, the, the fundamental menu, the, the, the activities. You can also create, solve, and review the problems with peer evaluation, the ratings, the stars, and all of that. Um, it has the overall layout right there. Videos can be implemented, slides can be implemented, so any kind of content can be implemented into the solution. Uh, we have roadmaps for other interesting ideas. Uh, up on funding, we are going to develop this further. We just released version 2.0. And also on the hardware side and on the cloud side, we have some interesting ideas how to uh, scale this and then bring this into the market. So with that, some competitive analysis um, to discuss a little bit later in more detail. And with that, have a nice smile. Thank you. <laughs>
sorry, to the abstract world, how um, a motion of a quadcopter can be represented by a quadratic equation. This is something which was never done before. We never showed the student this connection between the two things. And the teachers that are using that are, you know, the everyday teacher. Uh, Mary Tackle, as an example, a pre-calc teacher from uh, Bellevue School District in uh, near Washington, she's using Nokia 6100, I mean, 6100. This is like years old. Um, and um, um, John Shannon, a city director from uh, North Carolina, he's using the Motorola Razor, the first generation, if you remember this, uh, this flip, uh, flip phone. These guys want to engage their students, but they are not you know, proficient in, in technology. They don't have these smartphones. They don't have this, um, this technology. So what we are doing is making sure that they will be able to use that. Um, each one of these teachers today, they want to, uh, to engage them. And we have students, we have teachers, we have students across the country and in North and Latin America, more than 450 schools uh, are using this technology and engaging the students. Uh, in, in a whole new way. Uh, we've sold uh, more than $4 million to date, uh, and we are running, um, uh, accelerating uh, uh, pretty fast. Our programs span uh, from K to 16. Uh, we have programs for um, hands-on computer science for K to 4, uh, all the way to college level that uh, make sure that students will be engaged and will make sure that they will uh, learn uh, better. Our innovation was awarded uh, with, uh, uh, from several uh, pretty distingu distinguished uh, organizations, including the best ed tech company at uh, Southwest, Southwest EDU this year, and the gold from the Edison Award. Uh, we have a strong team, uh, deeply rooted in, uh, in ed tech and uh, with uh, a lot of mobile experience, um, and we are building a whole new future for, uh, for these students. The market opportunity here is huge. I mean, you're trying to think about uh, all, this, um, all this innovation. Who is using that? Probably rich private schools? No, not really. Uh, we are talking about the line item that's for STEM equipment budget in public schools, in public education, uh, about professional development, about grants that PTA in, in local schools are uh, giving the teachers. Uh, there is some private schools about that, around that, but most of the customers are public schools. Uh, pretty surprising. Globally, we are talking about a market opportunity of more than $56 billion. Um, this is us, um, and this is what we do. We make sure that students will change their life trajectory by uh, understanding why math, why science is relevant to their lives. Thank you. Thank you.